Hey guys, it's someone here. Let's kick it off with the Warrior this time, starting with the Fury spec. A Fury Warrior is one of those specs that on the surface seems to be only about spamming all the things as it's available in a very gruesome manner. That said, there are some things to keep in mind. At its core, it's a super fast spec with a sense of brutality on most of its abilities, from single target to cleave, high mobility and any other savage names you can come up with. Now, before we talk about those same abilities, let's go over talents. On the first tier, we get talents to improve your rage generation, such as War Machine. Auto attacks generate 10% more rage, and your movement speed is increased by 30% for 8 seconds, and 10 rage is generated every time a target is killed. Uh, pretty self explanatory, a great talent to use in open world or dungeons where you can reliably proc it for extra rage. As for raid bosses, not really that worth it. For that, you would wants endless rage. Every time you win rage, you gain 6 rage. This is by far a much more suited talent for raiding. As for a fresh meat, a Bloodthirst has a 15% chance to trigger in rage and heal you for 20% more. The extra chance on enrages isn't really that worth, but the bonus heal can be decent for open world or I imagine PvP. On the next tier, double time will give you an extra charge on charge and reduce its cooldown by 3 seconds, so just better mobility overall and more rage if you abuse those same charges. As for Stormbolt, it's a stun, so amazing to take for Mythic Plus. Impending Victory improves your victory rush, but generally not worth to take. At tier 3 we get Sudden Death and Fury Slash, both of these share about the same DPS increase. Sudden Death adds a proc, providing a free execute, granting some extra rage on top of damage. As for Furious Slash, is another ability to click, but also a stacking haste buff where you would want it at 3 stacks at all times. I recommend and prefer Sudden Death. Uh, Furious Slash uh, feels a bit clunky and personally feels out of place with your other abilities. Uh, that said, what it provides, it's really good. So choose what you prefer. Uh, for Mythic Plus, I would advise against a Furious Slash, as keeping that buff up will be a chore. Inner Rage is the most simple option, entirely passive, just improving your Raging Blow. DPS wise, it's weaker than the others, but if you're looking for something that doesn't add anything new, uh, it's here for you. On the next one is entirely optional. Bounding Stride will improve mobility again, uh, this time on Heroic Leap, providing a movement speed increase after each leap and reduce its cooldown. So great, but when you don't need mobility, War Paint will then be great to reduce damage taken while in Rage is up by 10%. As for Furious Charge, is also good for solo content or PvP. On to the next one, Carnage tends to be your go-to, reducing Rampage cost by 85 to 75 and increasing its damage by 15%. A lot of your damage is around Rampage anyway, so this just means better and more frequent Rampages. A frothing Berserker isn't bad, increases the Rampage cost by 10, but gives a buff to increase your overall damage by 10% and haste by 5% for 6 seconds after you use it. On paper, it is really good when combining with cooldowns, but currently Carnage performs the best, might change with time. As for Massacre, it is currently weaker simply because Rampage has a bigger role in your overall damage and rotation, Execute not so much comparing to the role it had in Legion. Tier 6 we get AoE choices, but they are also used in single target. Mid Cleaver is just going to improve your whirlwind, causing it to generate one extra rage per target hit and have a 10% chance to trigger in rage. A simple option that won't add anything new, but the rage provided isn't really that big of a deal and the 10% chance on in rage is simply not reliable enough to make it worth when you take into account that whirlwind is just your filler ability. So that leaves us with Bladestorm and Dragon Roar, both these burst AoE type of abilities. Dragon Roar generates 10 rage on top of burst damage 
and slows enemies on a 35 second cooldown, and Blaze Storm is more bursty but has a bigger cooldown of 1 minute but generates 20 rage and you have to channel it. The choice between the two is almost personal because in the end their damage is gonna be quite equal and both are used in the same way in your rotation. Uh, the most popular for single target is Dragon's Roar which I also personally recommend. For AoE such as Mythic Plus you can also take it but Blade Storm is gonna work slightly better there since like I said it's more bursty than Dragon's Roar, working best for tough trash packs. And then on the last tier all are useful to some extent, the most popular choice tends to be Siege Breaker, a 30 second cooldown ability increasing your damage done by 15% for 10 seconds, generating 10 rage on top, a Colossus Smash style ability where you would want it to stack with other CDs like Recklessness or even Dragon's Roar, especially since their cooldowns are practically shared, and of course as many rampages as you can. As for Mythic Plus and the like, works great as well since you can spread its debuff with your Whirlwind, uh, more on that later. Uh, reckless Abandon will in turn be the more bursty option, making your Recklessness generate 100 rage and last for 4 seconds longer, so yeah, quite bursty. And Anger Management to in turn provide more frequent Recklessness, lowering the CD to about 1 minute. So yeah, all work pretty much, their DPS differences are minimal so you can choose what you prefer, my go-to tends to be Siege Breaker for everything and don't worry, I'll talk about all these different playstyle choices in your rotation, which I'm gonna talk about now. So Fury Warrior is mainly about two things, Rampages and in rages. And of course, rage, which is tied to those two main abilities. In rage is a buff that increases your damage based on your mastery stat, increasing haste by 25%, so practically a mini bloodlust, and your movement speed are also increased by 10%, lasting for only 4 seconds. It procs off your blood thirst ability at a chance or for sure on your rampage. Rampages, however, cost rage. To generate said rage, you're gonna need to use your abilities, auto attack or even taking damage are all ways to get said rage. So before going into cooldowns and openers, let's go over your general priorities and ideas fury, such as how to get those rampages. So like I said, your goal is to get in rages, getting that damage bonus is a must and the haste not only allows you to do everything faster with the reduction of global cooldowns, but also reduces the actual cooldowns of your abilities like Bloodthirsts, Raging Blows, and even Executes. Permanent uptime is practically impossible, but you should aim for loops or cycles of building high rage, dumping rage with a Rampage, which is your highest damaging ability, going rage and building it back up again. So since we start at low rage, you want to start building it for your first Rampage. One of your highest priorities in this situation is Bloodthirst. Damage isn't that high, but has a chance for an Enrage, allowing you to get that Rampage quicker. You pretty much want to use it on cooldown if Enrage isn't already active to maximize its chances. If Enrage is active and you have nothing else to do, feel free to go for it anyway, but try to avoid it since the Enrage 4 second timer doesn't stack up. In the process, Bloodthirst gives you 8 Rage. After that comes your Raging Blow. Raging Blows has two charges with a 20% chance when you use it to reset its own cooldown. The idea with them is that you want the cooldown to be rolling at all times to also maximize its uses, so if the proc happens, use them in such a way that you still go below the two charges but never over camp rage, so be careful with that. In this situation we are rather safe, so getting procs just means a quicker rampage, which is the second job of Raging Blow, being a quick rage builder since it gives 12 of it. Now when you reach a 75 rage, your rampage becomes available so feel free to use it. The idea with Rampage is that you want to use it whenever it's available to get in Rage, dumping most of your Rage in the process. So after you use it, you get into this Berserk mode where all of your abilities are coming off cooldown much quicker, so you keep the previous priorities and use Whirlwind as a filler when nothing to click for some more Rage. Uh, so same as before, but faster. 
server. As for the execute proc, uh, the general idea with them is that you only want to use while enraged as well. So after a rampage or when bloodthirst procs. So keep track of that enrage buff. Getting a weak aura will help here. Mine is a non-conventional one. If you want it, do check down below in the description. The guide does amazing work. But this execute usage follows through your execute phase as well. So when below 30% of HP. Keep in mind, execute gives 20 rage, uh, both the proc and the normal one. So be careful to not overcap it. But again, just focus on using it while enraged. And then you just keep on with this cycle or loop, uh, building rage to go for another rampage, get enraged, spam as much as you can, and build towards another one. With bloodlust effects and other buffs, like your CD, which we're gonna talk about in a bit, this gets even more crazier, so you might get to a point where rampage is ready to go again while still being enraged. This can also occur if bloodthirst enrage procs before you do your uh, rampage. If that happens, you can delay it for a little bit if you have other abilities to press. That said, you don't want to overcap rage, so use it either below 90 rage or when the enrage actually drops. But yeah, not too complicated, just a lot of button spam. If with a furious slash, you just gonna have to fit it in and keep up with the buff, so you're gonna try and use it in between your raging blows and bloodthirst uh, cooldowns. So same priorities as before, bloodthirst use on cooldown when not enraged, a raging blow use once to get the CD rolling, and in between that, go for your Fury Slash to build up to the buff to 3 stacks, and then keep it up with a normal rotation and refresh set buff at the last possible seconds, or during those dead moments in your rotation where you otherwise would fill in with a whirlwind, because remember, Fury Slash actually gives uh, some rage as well. This idea follows even while opening up before popping your CDs, so be mindful of that. With those ideas in mind, let's talk about your cooldowns like Siege Breaker, Dragon's Roar, or Blade Storm, and of course, recklessness. To explain them better, let's go over your opener. So when starting up a fight, this being specced into Siege Breaker, you want to go for your recklessness before you charge, which you want to use whenever possible, by the way. It gives 20 rage, so it's a great boost towards your initial rampage. That said, recklessness improves all rage generation by doubling it. So those 20 rage from the charge becomes 40. Recklessness as a CD is just a means to get rampages much quicker. Its biggest benefit is the rage generation, meaning that your rotation stays the same, although a bit more chaotic as you're generating so much freaking rage. So be careful to not overcap. That being said, what you want to open with when you get to the boss after that charge will be pretty much the same as your regular priorities, although you're gonna get that rampage fairly quick, so go for a bloodthirst first, just to get the CD rolling, after that will be the Siege Breaker, also gives some rage and improving all of your damage done by 15% as a debuff. A Siege Breaker is to be stacked with your other CDs when possible, such as Recklessness, but also always before you do a rampage so high on rage, so it benefits from that damage increase, and all of your subsequent damage while enraged benefits from it also, then trying to fit as many rampages as you can during its window as they get available. This usage persists throughout all of your rotation, so you want to use those siege breakers on cooldown. So immediately after that, you go for a raging blow to get the cooldown rolling, and then your other CD, Dragon's Roar. A Dragon's Roar is another CD that should be stacked with your other CDs, primarily siege breaker for the damage increase, but not only that, you need to be enraged before using it, so it gets even more benefit, much like Execute. If you with Bladestorm instead follows the same principle, although there's some more alignment to do since their cooldown timers are different, so mid-fight, and then after this, just keep it going, be mindful of your rage while Recklessness is still up, and enjoy the Massacring. Using those cooldowns mid-fight, again, use them pretty much on cooldown, just be mindful that if you can stack them, do, that's your main priority with those same CDs. And yeah, that covers it. On to AoE or Cleave. So to explain AoE in Fury is actually really quite simple. Everything stays the same, except Whirlwind becomes far more important. Why? Because it grants a buff, uh, two stacks of it, that makes every melee ability hit for additional targets, for a percentage of the damage. 
meaning you pretty much go for a whirlwind first, then two abilities like a bloodthirst and raging blow, then another whirlwind, more two abilities, and so on and so on. A same rotation, but just weaving in a whirlwind every two button presses. And you want to start doing this anytime there's two targets or more. As for CDs, stay exactly the same. The stacking of Siege Breaker with Dragon's Roar slash Storm with an Enrage is even more important here. In fact, it's key to burst the AoE in Fury. And yes, Siege Breaker is spread by Whirlwinds, so you would want to build Rage for a Rampage, spread a Siege Breaker, cleave with a Rampage, get Enraged, then go for a Bladestorm or Dragon's Roar and watch them numbers. And yeah, that covers it all. As for stats and traits, as always, strength is the king, along with, of course, weapon item level. In terms of secondary stats, haste is quite valuable as it has a pretty interesting effect with a spec by further reducing the CDs of Raging Blow, Bloodthirsts and Execute, so in general faster rage generation for Rampages. Mastery is followed by Haste for more damage overall while Enraged. Uh, Crit is also pretty decent with Verse being the weakest one. These stats, as most specs, do have breakpoints and so they will shift at certain points. So remember to sim to figure out what's the best stat for you at any point in time. As for traits, none really change your rotation and you can see on the screen what's currently best. And check down below in the description a website to track all of the trait powers as it change quite regularly so you can keep up with any changes to traits as they change quite regularly and new ones might come in. And yeah, that covers it all. As always, thank you for watching, hope it helps. Remember to like and subscribe to get more videos like this and check out my Patreon if you wish to support the channel. Have a fantastic day everyone and I'll see you all next time. See ya.